G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Comics to Movies and More. I'm your host Sean Keenan and I have uh, Stephen along with me tonight as well as a local artist uh, from Perth, um, Tom. So we're going to talk uh, the movie Bright. We're going to talk about a cool new Kickstarter and we're also uh, going to do some creative tips about collaborating with people internationally so uh without further ado um welcome guys how are you tonight hey tom hey sean nice nice to meet you tom and i'm glad to be here sean yeah how are you tom how's everything over in perth ah loving it loving it it's good eh? I love this. Uh, well, I think we've got like just that slight time time uh, lag here, so um, we'll try to uh, 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 give you give you a second to to answer anything before we start uh, calling again, uh, talking again. I mean, I uh, want to say hello to uh, everyone in the chat. Uh, a lot of people always uh, show up every week, which is really nice. So, uh, g'day Moira, how you going? Uh, Sazzy Gal, nice to see you. Uh, Lucas, how you going, mate? Um, and uh, Darren, uh, hello to you, mate, as well. So um, thank you for uh, joining us again, because I know that I did do a, a, a live um uh, opening uh, launch Kickstarter on uh, Friday night, so it's very cool that uh, everyone uh, attended that and is now watching this as well. So, and congratulations, man! Uh, you and Brad have done very, really, really well off that. I think uh, is that the biggest one day that you had your biggest twenty four hours. That uh, has been oh, very my close biggest. To. Yeah. yeah, no, it's been um, my biggest uh, 24 hours in regards to um, amount um, funding. Uh, it smashed my um, uh, backer back account uh, in regards to, to the first 24 uh, and 48 hours. And uh, for a new... Uh, a new series. I, I was really taken aback that uh, uh, we've had this type of uh, reaction um, so far. So we're sitting at uh, eighty, just over eighty percent funded in forty-eight hours, uh, which was at eight o'clock um, tonight. So uh, that's really exciting. We've only got another six hundred odd dollars um, uh, and a little bit more to to go to hit our target. So, but thank you very much, man. So. Oh, look, you, you're going to hit it uh, without any problems. Uh, and look, and I always say this, look, um, I played a relatively small role in this. I actually got the chance to actually let in this comic. So thank you very much for the opportunity to do so. I always thank you for the trust, really. I know. I've been impressed. You've got three Kickstarters going at the at the same time that you've had some sort of uh, uh, working. That's, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, look, it's actually worked out. Look, it's never, uh, uh, Tom, uh, I don't know if you know, but I do letter comics, and it's just really, really weird that three projects have launched on Kickstarter. Three of them I provided the letters for. So it's, they, they all decided to launch at the same time. So I'm, I'm trying my best to promote all three. <laughs> so I'm trying, when I do my Facebook post, I love all three together and go, by the way, I'm lettering all these three. Go and support them. So <laughs> it, it, it's been fun. I have been disappointed. Every one of those posts has not had the the picture of Talos of Sparta. It's had the other two, but not not Talos of Sparta. So I'm going to call you out on that. <laughs> I've been very no. <laughs> it, I don't know how Facebook picks it, but I'll I'll try to do one. No. Just tell us, man. I'll, I've done I'm, a couple just Talos, by the way. Yes, I know. I'm <laughs> only staring at. Tom, I do give Stephen a hard time. Um, I will look in the chat because I. Any second now, Moira is going to tell me to stop, uh, <laughs> stop picking on him. So uh, that, that, that happens almost every week. But let's get into it. Uh, the movie we're going to, to talk about um, tonight is uh, a Netflix movie, which is uh, which is Bright, uh, which I thought was 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 kind of cool. Um, I had a look at, uh, and we'll get into your Kickstarter later, Tom. But this kind of was the first thing that that popped into my head when I saw the image um, for your uh, comic and and uh, Kickstarter that's uh, uh, running at the moment. So I thought, oh, what a cool um, type of uh, uh, movie to, to talk about. So um, hopefully both you and, and Stephen have, have seen this. You have? Yes. Yep. Yes, yeah. good, good. Yeah. 
I was going to say, be great to pick a movie that no one's seen and I can just sit here and talk <laughs> for 20, 20 minutes. But um, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll let you go first, Stephen, and then we'll, we'll find out what Tom thought of it and uh, I'll go last tonight. I think this is actually one of Netflix uh, movies in terms of its first A lister, and this is a little when Will Will Smith is, I don't know if he's still considered A list, but back when Bright came out, he was definitely an A lister. So it was one of those huge things. Oh my God, you are having a movie that's not going to cinema that contains all this. Now it's passe. Now you got Nicole Kidman in you know miniseries and stuff like that. So it's very passe now. But previously, this was actually a huge deal for Netflix that you got Will Smith in. Um, I loved it, actually. It's it's kind of the, a buddy cop movie as well, as, um, you know, they're two very, very different. Um, they bring very different things. Around. And I love alternate realities. Um, you know, I've read so many. Look, I, I, I like World War II, and I, I've always had the what if this happened. For example, what if Japan had, you know, launched ground troops after Pearl Harbor. And they, they were saying the US would not have been prepared and all the rest of it. What if Germany didn't go after Russia in winter? We'll have to decide to consolidate and then make a deal. You know, there's all these different alternate histories. And I loved Bright because it's alternate history. Um, the closest movie I can think about in terms of the setting, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Onward. Right, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a movie. It, it, when I watch Onward, it really reminds me of Bright, just in terms of the setting that uh, magic and everything exists. But you know what? Magic is too hard. Machines are a lot easier. And that's right. the whole premise set up. And I think they executed well. I mean, there was some in story-wise, there was bits, you know, they could have sharpened up a lot. But in terms of, hey, for a Netflix production, uh, for to get an A-lister in to have a complete story which was actually you know for a non netflix not being a studio itself at the time i thought it was fantastic i i loved it i and plus i love i love uh will smith so it was a really really easy sell for me tom what, <laughs> what was your thoughts on it oh no i'm gonna be the odd one out i uh actually kind of love to hate this movie i really oh, okay. uh, yeah i i have like massive issues <laughs> i'm a real snob um but uh, yeah, I don't know. To, to me, I think it's um, I think it's funny to bring up Onward because Onward is like a good example of world building, trying to build, as you said, like the same world that this is, right? But I think this is a bad example of world building because to me, it will never make sense why orcs are like gangsters and like, oh yeah, like, like we're the, like, I guess, oh, like they're the minority in this world. But to me, it doesn't, quite add up where it's like okay but then also uh, i think the best example is yep. the fairy right she's yep. like go and kill that fairy that's outside that's a little humanoid person you got this whole movie about how you're supposed to treat each other well and you know it's it's allegories for racism and things like that but with dogs yep. there's a little person that's like thinking and <laughs> yeah like rabid but they just exterminate them like they're insects. With, with, a, broom, with a broom of, of all things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, to me, it's such a strange movie. Like, And the elf, when the elf woman first comes into it, the little elf, the woman who is definitely not the one from um, Game of Thrones, but I keep thinking I'll of it. Her, I'll get her name. I don't know her name off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll, wiki, I'll wiki her name. Uh, it's like Fifth Element, right? It's like, oh, we're doing Fifth Element? Is it Fifth Element with the girl... Um, I can't think what her name is. Lilu. Yeah, yeah, right? It's like that. It's like, oh, now we're doing that with this story. And I don't know. For me, it just felt a bit weird. Um, well, her name I, was uh, Nomi Rapash, and she was Leela in this movie, as opposed to right. Lilu in the fifth element. Yeah. So it's hey, clear. Hey, how are you going? We've got, we've got hey. an extra guest. Hey. <laughs> hey, sorry about that, guys. Not What's the problem there? It is 5 a.m. or so. It's pitch black, oh. we can see. <laughs> yeah, so sorry about that, guys. Oh, um, my God, 5 a.m. I, I, I'll I apologize, mate. I thought I had a damn pat with the time. I. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, that's it's part of living in our global community, like you guys were talking about there. With all the different well, 
<laughs> well, we've just been talking about Bright and um, yeah. uh, Stephen saying how much he enjoyed the film, but uh, Tom has taken a, a oh. tomahawk to the movie <laughs> <laughs> and he's smashing it to pieces. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> No, don't apologize. This is this is the reason why we, we we do this. We want your honest uh honest opinion. And it's um it's interesting because now that you've you've actually brought that up and said that, I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't get that. That's that's as now I'm gonna have to go back and watch this and go, Yeah, really? Why why did they why did they do that? He's just ruined this film for me. Thanks. Uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. I did hear like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Couple minutes. It, it, it. I definitely had that view of it as well. It might be. I mean, I, I know all over the world there's stuff going on, but in America, uh, especially there's a lot of division and and based on a lot of sort of what uh, Tom was talking about, like racial politics and stuff, um, in the U.S. Uh, and I guess, I mean, Will Smith has been doing that in a lot of his movies for a long time, just a lot about class politics and stuff. I don't know if he's always the best example of it, but, uh, of what to do in that situation. But, um, cause the fairy thing, I, that was a little weird for me too. I was like, wait, so what is, the, are they... Are they fine? Like I know in ancient mythology, fairies are actually very ornery. Um, so you might they might be pests. They'll like take your babies. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. What What's your take on it, uh, Sean? Uh, before your your just <laughs> it was all shattered on you. Um, I, I did like it until about uh, five minutes <laughs> ago. Um, no, I, I thought it was. Um, I, I thought it was. I thought it was different. Um, uh, again, I was uh, impressed with the the quality of it for a Netflix, Netflix um, film, especially uh, during the time that it, it came out. It, Probably didn't have the the high, like this did have a higher budget than a lot of their other stuff, but it still didn't have that you know um, 120 150 um, million dollar budget that um, I thought they did really well uh, with what they what yeah. they worked with. Uh, just just on that one, of course, I was Wikipedia on the girl's name. Uh, the budget <laughs> yeah. for this movie was. Uh, 90 to 100 million dollars so they had a full oh, really? budget for this so wow they, okay i was wondering they, why this wasn't like a, a mini series to be honest yeah i think you couldn't lock you couldn't probably lock will smith in for that long because will smith probably didn't want to do 20 episodes because there's a lot more work I sorry, know, sorry. but a lot of the seasons these days, yeah. uh, you, um, especially with Netflix, they got like three parters. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the the new yeah. Dracula um, series that they've got on there, and they're three like one hour um, or one hour and ten minute um, episodes type thing. So I think when you're, I think the hardest thing with this, and and it's much easier in animation, even though animation isn't cheap, but to create a whole um, universe. Uh, is much easier when you can show all these different things in the background or show them do um, people doing magic while other stuff is happening where with this um, it was quite, you know, like I felt it was a little bit staged at certain places to kind of, um, you know, go, oh, this, this is the universe. It wasn't, I didn't feel like it was a natural um, point in the story where they would go, okay, we're going to um, show this because this is what happens. It was kind of like, oh, we need to show show this, so we're going to kind of write something in in for it. But um, yeah, I, I, I didn't mind it. I thought um, Joel Edgington was it was really good as the the orc. Um, you know, it's not uh, not too often that uh, um, Aussies are, are the one of the main. Uh, co-stars in a in a series, unless you're Chris Hemsworth, that's uh, or Hugh Jackman, that's about about it at the moment. So, um, just on Chris Hemsworth, though, because uh, if you remember, before he was cast as Thor, and even when he was cast, there was a lot of negativity around him. Oh, you're being this unknown guy in, and all the rest of it, and he nailed it. So, I'm uh, really happy for every success he's got. But before the MCU. 
he was a nobody. He was um, home and away. He was a neighbor. Sorry. Yeah. It was yeah. Uh, laugh, laugh yeah. half on the left. No, no. The cabin in the woods. Cabin in the woods. That's right. That's cabin an awesome movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, that, he, that he was got killed cool. off very quickly, though. He 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 died in a motorcycle, didn't he? He's the one who rode the motorcycle and. You just ruined it for everyone. Good one, mate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He was in it. He was in it for a while, wasn't he? I can't remember now. It's been a while since I've seen that. Next movie. Next, next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, twist, the twist on the end of that I thought was fantastic. I did not see that coming at all. It was just like it was a completely different movie. So, but yeah, no. Nah, this was this was um a, a good movie. I didn't think it was a, a great movie, but I did think it was like a um an introduction into a, a wider universe i'm just surprised that they didn't uh build off the hype because this got a lot of hype when it mm. when it first come out and was like yeah. their real first you know hit and they've done done a bit but uh and they talked about doing a second one but i haven't heard anything um about uh a second a second one of right. these since it, since uh since you know it first um fizzled away and that's it it, it really reminds me of a lot of will projects will smith projects that seem to have this really large universe and then nothing you don't really see like uh our producer or an editor ben uh napier was said that this should have come out 10 years ago instead of wild wild west you know like this movie should have been right out because they all have like that kind of kooky really large world building and then they just like end it with a real kind of funny nice ending like at the end of bright like with the whole the fairy flies into the into the close shot yeah and it's like oh yep. okay that was an ending of a movie you know but uh, <laughs> yeah. i don't know i mean it did it, i i enjoyed it don't get me wrong i mean i think uh racial politics are you know obviously a huge deal right now but i don't think it's necessarily a bummer um i am not i am a sci-fi boy though so sometimes fantasy stuff like this uh can kind of turn me off just because like i don't know the whole thing with like all the elder races and stuff can kind of it's just been done so many times but this was cool because it's in la and yeah you know like it's like bad boys plus middle earth yeah and so it, it was almost like if you took middle earth and then brought it up you know, two thousand. They were saying two thousand years. I think probably, maybe more. But anyway, the the issue I have with with fantasy because I, I love fantasy as well is that there's not a um I feel a lot of real big budget um fantasy films like Lord of the Lord of the Rings like something that goes into to that type of depth with that type of um budget and everything so what we do get is like mythica which is kind of like you know your your b grade c grade actors with you know um not the best cameras and 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 the storyline some of those are actually quite good but just everything else is just so bad that you just kind of like oh man if, if this just got you know a little bit more money and, and funding and that you could do so so much better. But I think there's so many, and, and that's why you're saying you kind of get turned off by, by fantasy ones. There's just so many like that, that I think studios are like, yeah, we're not going to go within a hundred, hundred meters of uh, um, this type of thing, because they're like, you know, it's just cringe worthy. How are we going to get people across the line to, to enjoy this? And, um, you know, a lot of the fantasy stuff, as I said, it's hard to just build up in, in one, one movie. Uh, you know, you look at so many of the, the ones that, um, that do have a big budget that have a first film and just absolutely flop like that. Um, I'm not going to pronounce it right, but it was that dragon one, Aragon. Yeah. Yeah. That was based on some novels, but they they yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's so, in the old category of fantasy as well. I think Game of Thrones is gonna change all that. But I have a theory about why there isn't a second one of this. Um do you guys know who Max Landis is? Name sounds familiar. He's the screenwriter of this and he was the um uh he did like I Frank it's no not I Frank, they did like 
oh God, Victor Frankenstein. He did a couple of things, but um, there's a video online of Brand. him this was years before Bride, where he um, they've got to pitch a movie. So he pitches this movie about these people go uh, on this underwater drilling site. It's kind of there's creatures in the water or something. Um, and basically, what happens at the end of this pitch is that it's a modern day sequel to the Lord of the Rings, and they found like Middle Earth and the One Ring at the bottom of the ocean, this drilling team, right? And I think that he came up with that idea on the show and then left and was like, fuck, that's actually a great idea, modern day Lord of the Rings. But then he couldn't do the drilling thing because you can't have a theater. No one's going to market your movie where you don't find out it's a Lord of the Rings sequel until the last 10 minutes, right? So they go, uh, you've got to do something else, man. But yeah, modern day fantasy. So I think he really, this was like his brainchild. So he did um, American Ultra. So, well, that's another one, uh, with Jesse Eisenberg and um, a girl on it. But yeah. I think that this was really his brainchild, and he brought it to, to Netflix, and they were like, yeah, sweet, we'll do it. But he got, like, Me too I think. Um, uh, oh. Me too Yeah, he, he's been – he apparently is not a very nice guy. Um, and I oh. think that that's kind of – got rid of the sequel. Bummer. I did make that – I did think about – Middle Earth being, in, you know, just ramming that up. I, that is a, that is a cool idea. I think just because. Oh yeah, you should hear a pitch it as well, man. He's so excited. Yeah. Yeah, when That's you a- get one billion dollars to do a Lord of the Rings um series, man. Oh, man, can you imagine the the play time you could have with one billion dollars, and it's only going to be a ten yeah. episode series. Like what? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. No, but I, yeah. going back to, and I think we've got a few more minutes, so we'll, I'll, I'm happy to try to close this topic off anyway. But in terms of movies which are similar, I think Onward did a much better job world building and a much better job explaining it. It's a very different genre of film, but in terms of the, the, the setting, they are very, very similar settings. And the one thing which I think dismissed more than anything else and which onward had it had heart a little bit more like um no matter as much as i wanted to see um uh joel joel's character do well you didn't really feel for him much and that's i think that's a little bit of a miss in terms of characterization you didn't really want to see him succeed and when you when you build up to that type of character where you you know you, you're just watching the movie go along but you don't actually get invested into it while i suppose in onward man, you wanted the dad to come back. You know, you just, yeah, just yeah, yeah. you're waiting for that payoff. And, you know, everything was leading up to that. And this one, you're just chasing the MacGuffin, you know, you're chasing the, chasing the one that, right. you know, that gives you the power. But there was no emotional attachment. Like chasing to see your dad again is very different from getting the, the weapon of ultimate power, you know, it's like, yeah. And that right. different right. emotional connection makes it very like you don't get that investment into it and again i do know yeah. they are very different films but one i was invested in this one i'll come along for the ride and i suppose that's the difference right oh yeah and one, one last thing uh just because you mentioned wild wild west will smith gave up the matrix for wild wild west so just remember wow. that he gave up the matrix for wild wild west matrix was offered to will smith he decided to do Wild Wild West instead. So just remember that anytime you need to make a decision in your life, it's probably as bad as that. <laughs> what was he snorting that night? I like, kid you not. Like, seriously, what, what would even, what would you be thinking that the uh, steampunk um, Western, when, when steampunk wasn't even popular, like was going to be a thing. Like, so, yeah, that's that's <laughs> uh, one movie that um, I've uh, I've only ever walked out on one movie, uh, but that was one that <laughs> I almost walked out of. Um, the only movie I've ever walked out of is Mystery Men. I cannot stand that film at all. I I do not even want to talk about it because it just it, it grinds so my funny. goat. <laughs> I love that movie, man. Oh, so I knew you were going to see that, Tom. I knew you were going to see that. My mystery, man. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, mate. It's not funny. It's just absolute trash. 
It was the <laughs> only time I've ever walked back to the, the box office and went, give me my money back because <laughs> that is the worst piece of shit I've seen in my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I've like, and heaps of people have said, what are you talking about, man? You know, it's a really good movie. I've tried to watch it again. And I swear to God, I get about half an hour in and I'm like, I, I cannot, no, this is just, uh, it's like pulling. T- I'd prefer to go to a dentist and have my teeth ripped out than watch that film. Seriously. I know. Anyway, that's off a, topic. There, that's a really some really good lines from it, though. I sh- I shovel. I shovel very well. I mean, <laughs> that's what I, I don't think. That's I don't know if you read. No. I don't know if you read that point where he said no, that. No, like, see, just, that's it's that's not ridiculous. a good line. <laughs> no. It's like a, that's, no, it was that's describing not, his, Are you talking to me? His, I said, are yeah. you talking to me? Like, I shovel, no, I shovel, I, I shovel, very well. I shovel, please, <laughs> please. Give you a ball and ball to the head. Um, anyway. anyway, it's 10.30 now, so um, we should continue with it. Um, we so. will. <laughs> so why we have uh, Tom and Taylor on, not to be confused with uh, Australian extraordinaire Tom Taylor, who uh, does all of the uh, comic book writing here uh, for Marvel and DC. But we've got Tom and Taylor on uh, to talk about their series. Uh, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, Glurk and Bo. That's correct. Yep. I did that right. <sighs> so um, so uh, tell us, guys, what's, uh, what is the um, concept behind... Uh, the the book the concept is two uh space truckers out in the edge of our solar system are sort of attacked and set upon by a malevolent dark matter energy creature nice nice and uh i i can can i i want to ask you permission can i play the video um of uh Yep, because this is got to be one of the most interesting uh, videos that uh, that I have watched. Oh. <laughs> Greetings. My name is Taylor Shelton King, and I am the auteur of Glurk and Bo Meet an Angel of Death. The idea for the story came to me in a vision of apoplexy, and my very neurons rang with excitement at the thought of a predative assault by a mysterious, energetic creature upon a spacecraft and its occupants. Later, during a meeting of the minds with the prodigious Benjamin Napier, the idea came about to turn the story into a comic book, and the Enterprise exploded from then on. The universe in which these characters reside quite resembles our own and has grown and connected to include other plots and ideas beyond the limited series of the Glurk and Bo saga. Horror, science fiction, comedy. These are the five pillars of storytelling and Glurk and Bo has them all in excess. I do hope you continue to support us in our efforts and join us in the exploration of the void of imagination. From the entire BG Comics Collective, we thank you for your support and your continued interest in this story. Boy, that's great. I don't have to do hardly any work at all. Oh my god. I I absolutely loved that. I when when I got to that science fiction um part, I was I was like laughing out loud. It was so funny. I was like, "Oh my god, this is gold." Um but the the thing that I was I'm going to say is that um you've got it in the middle of your campaign, but uh you didn't have it as your your, your main video. That's a good tip I, i'll have to send that along to ben so um but uh but yeah but I was, uh, i've just uh, added the the link 
um, into um, the the chat. So if anyone wants to, uh, that's watching, that wants to have a look, you can actually uh, click on one of those links and jump on and have a look at these these guys. Kickstarter will we'll, um, have a look at uh, more of it uh, now. Um, but uh, Shane has said um, that was amazing. So... Yeah, what what uh, I just was straight off the top of my head. I was thinking, um, uh, I'm probably showing my age here, but like out of limits. I don't know if that uh, yeah. that that was what it was um, meant to be like. But I was just like, you know, I was just thinking of that guy sitting there with it with the voice setting up the story and that in this episode of the Great thing about Outer Limits, limits of the come music. Back in and it picked up. Sorry. Sean, you still there? Stay, no, no, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know whether it's me or did you drop out or did I drop out? Uh, you must have dropped out, mate. We, we were halfway through a conversation and you just yeah. rudely interrupted. Am I back? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can I'm hear you. My apologies. I'm back. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I catch a break? I know, I know. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I, I do today. give Stephen a hard time. I, I do apologize. So. <laughs> Uh, so, so Taylor, um, you're not so sorry, though. You're uh, probably definitely not sorry. But... <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Uh, and I tell you what, I should be nice to you because you did me a really big favor <laughs> on Friday night. So I'll, uh, I'll take a step back and and uh, and, and be nicer. Um, so Tom's the artist on the series. Um, that's that's correct. Um, so. Did you guys already know each other um, prior to, to this project? How did um, it come about with you you guys um, uh, working to it together? Tom, yeah, Ben, uh, we had the script and the idea, and uh, Ben, our editor and producer, uh, hit Reddit to find some artists to work for us, and we happened upon Tom. Honestly, it was kind of like just happened and we found him really quickly and we saw like we um sent out some copy for like a test page um so like artists we wanted to see how artists would interpret uh just copy and um a panel description and that kind of thing and and then we saw his style and just were you know it was a really quick decision of like yeah that's what we like we like that a lot let's go with that and uh that's cool. And and Tom, um, have you worked on on something before, or what was uh, what what drew you to to this project? Uh, yeah, I worked on um, uh, some other books before. Um, I don't know. I just like drawing sci-fi stuff. Um, you don't have to use as much reference. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, you still have to use reference. You could just go a little wilder. No, but um, see, that's yeah. why my artists hate me because I do historical um uh, uh, books, no. and and there's all about reference, and they're like, "Fuck you, Sean." Yeah. I was doing um before this book, I was doing like a time travel one, and uh, yeah, oh man, there's not the worst thing about the historical stuff is there's um, it's quite difficult on the internet to figure out what is good reference. And what's just somebody's hell good cosplay? Like, okay, all right, I really got to think about this. But um, yeah, no, yeah, just dig, dig the story and that. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I'm just going to pull up uh, the, the the Kickstarter again. So we've got 30 days um, to run. Uh, your goal is it's converted to Australian guys. I do apologise. We can't can't fix that up. But uh, 853 um, uh, to to the goal, and you're 233 dollars there. Um, with uh, with your your campaign, is the the book almost finished, or is that just for um, uh, certain parts of the book, or just the printing, or, or what was the the idea behind the goal? Most of the goal is to recoup. Uh, production cost and also pay for printing so it's finished and i believe it's uh i think we're waiting we're i think it's at the printers right now oh awesome uh, either that or we're waiting to start the printing um but it will it's a fully so when you back the kickstarter it's already ready to go you are essentially ordering your copy um so we have it 
Um, we have actually number two in production right now. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so. yeah, I think that's the one thing in, in regards to Kickstarters that both Stephen and I um, are, are a firm believer about is that we do have the majority of the the book um, ready to go uh, prior to, to us um, launching. Yeah. Uh, and that's so that um, the, that actual production and turnaround of getting it out to people is, uh, is much, much shorter. So uh, I'm nowhere near as quick as Stephen, but uh, uh, I try to make sure that I've got uh, all my, my ducks in a row beforehand. So, um, so uh, Tom, uh, we, this is your your cover. Is that uh, this your artwork? Yep, that's Mine. cool. And uh, is there? Sorry. <laughs> I I do like this. This is very cool. So just killing killing time. <laughs> um. Yeah. So was there any any reason um that there's uh no pages or or any um. Uh, stuff that we can look at inside the the book. Uh, it's I believe it's just on our. Uh, that's just the case on our Kickstarter. If you go to bgcomics.com, there's a separate link uh, to. Uh, we found a host, uh, Global Comics with an X, and there's a uh, digital preview. Um. Uh, with like four pages on there okay cool if you if you can oh uh, you've got that in the private chat perfect there we go awesome i'll yeah, pull so that up um site. and uh even then we'll have like you know uh downloadable digital copies and then of course uh we'll be shipping out physicals um when those are ordered and i think we're trying to figure out a printer actually in on your continent um because we have Tom over there, we'd love to get some books over there too, without having to ship, you know, something. Yes, yeah. I, Tom and I were talking about this uh, off air. I said, um, you know, international shipping is an absolute um, horror um, sometimes. So if you do have uh, creators on on different continents, it um, it is great to to be able to print in uh, in different areas. So I said, uh, if Tom hangs around after the show, I'll uh, I'll give him some of our our awesome. contacts here that we use in regards to, to to printing. So although Melbourne Melbourne to Perth is is, is probably just as cheap as uh, as just as expensive as, as shipping overseas these days. So wow. um, yeah, so so. Uh, uh, how did you come up with the, the idea of this, uh, Taylor? Was it just one you know, weird night that you, you thought of the idea or is it something you've been sitting on for, for quite some time? Or I think this one, the, uh, the basic idea is something I've been sitting on. It's kind of like a, based on Event Horizon or um, I'm a big Trekkie. There's a few episodes where there's a lot of like, um, running into spatial anomaly and you lose your mind type stuff. This one is definitely more of kind of like a uh, hmm. It's more of a an, uh, like a organic issue because they are an organic creature, really. But um, The, the the basic idea was already there, just kind of like all, a lot about being isolated and what is the most isolated you could possibly be in a spaceship in the void of space, you know, with either just yourself or another guy with, you know, Glurk and Bo together. Um, and yeah, I, I think the idea has been around for a while and I've wanted to, I've like, I think very visually, I've seen it in my head, just like long corridors and then shadows coming out. Um, and I had that basic idea, and then Ben was like, was telling me about getting into trying to make indie comics. And I said, well, I have a, an idea that might play well for that. And then we just sort of ta started talking about it and went from there. But, uh, so what's uh what's Ben's role in in all of uh, all of this? 
organically he has taken on the role of producing and like editing the book and he has done um all of the behind the scenes stuff like finding the artists like uh working out financials with them because we have been paying for our work um yeah just doing a lot of the organizing finding um other shows to talk to to help promote it working out with uh, globalcomics.com and working stuff out with kickstarter trying to learn how to do a good kickstarter campaign so ben has been on top of a lot of that originally the idea was for us to both write and i think he's been doing some writing uh while juggling everything else <laughs> But uh, after this series, after Glurk and Bo, which we have it planned out to be a six, uh, a six book series, uh, we're we're looking at doing um, an expanded universe uh, monthly series. After that, oh, cool! So I've got the got the link up here now, so that we yeah. can have a look at some of uh, Tom's uh, awesome work here so um i really like this if um i'm just going to click on it because it actually goes through uh from panel to panel which is uh which is really cool so it doesn't just show the the, the whole page i thought that was what that was kind of cool so um so how long have you been uh drawing uh tom is it something that you've always done is it is it something that you've just recently got into uh and and why you know comic books Oh, it's something I've always done, eh? Um, uh, why comic books? Because Batman was a comic book, and when I was a kid, I loved Batman, and I still do. Uh, and it, that was my gate. Batman was my gateway drug into comic books. So. <laughs> Ah, uh, so, see, I'm a Marvel Marvel guy my, myself, Tom. It seems like we're the the opposite of uh of one another. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I totally understand. Um, uh, Ben couldn't uh, couldn't make it to today, but uh, I I do a very similar role uh, uh to him within within my uh, business and, and comic creating. Um, I'd like to do more of the writing, but I do find that once you have it a strong writer and, and team around you then then you kind of do what you're um strong uh strong at and let them get on and do uh what they're what they're good at so uh so you said this was going to be a um six part uh mini series is that correct to begin with that's right yeah awesome and you're already in pr production to, to number two as well that's right. Yeah, we actually have outline, basic outlines for the whole thing, um, and that was that was mostly me just like saying like, because we talked about just doing this first one as a one shot for a while, just as to practice getting our feet wet. Um, but the story exploded, and I was like, Ben, I can't tell the story in one book. It's not gonna work. And now that we have like an expanded universe around it it's like well we got to put out all these books now dude because i got writing to do and um you know and we're just kind of letting that happen and, and being really excited about it but uh yeah, six yeah, I was really naive when I first um, first started and, and kind of was getting a, a friend to help me uh, change my, my story into a into a comic script. And um, I was just like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to tell this. And he's like, dude, you know, do you understand that, like, just showing someone blinking is like three or four panels? You know, you need to show their eyes open, their eyes closed their eyes opening or open again he, he goes <laughs> there's no way you're gonna be able to get this whole story in into a, a single issue so um it's a steep learning curve if you've um if you've never done it before and it is kind of interesting when um you know people that haven't done a comic book before come in and go oh i've got all these good ideas and you're, and you're kind of having to to pull the reins and go oh man do, do you know how much that costs you know you want to animate pages and do this awesome kickstarter video do you really want to spend a thousand dollars on that so um yeah but we've got some really cool uh people in our in our chat and we've got uh sazzy gal that has said she's backed yes awesome thank you so much 
Thank um, you. Lucas. Thanks, how's it going? Lucas just said that as uh, well. Thank um, Moira. It's Lucas as well. Yep, Lucas, uh, Moira as well, which is which is really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, and then Marcus just uh, left a comment there. Said I will definitely update the Kickstarter launch page with some images onto the page, um, less steps for people to take through um, to, to other pages, which is uh, some pretty good, uh, pretty good advice there as well. So, um, so did you have anything, Stephen? I know you dropped off there for a little bit. I was trying to uh, cover you as much as uh, much as I could. There, are you back? Oh look. I think I'm back. Look, I've yeah. turned my video off. Like, uh, for people who know, uh, um, my where I have, I have absolute rubbish internet. So uh, I'm always prepared for this. I don't think this is the first time. But oh, look, um, the main thing I was going to ask is, yeah, you mentioned it's they it's still that sci-fi element, but it's very different from that style. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Sorry, Disconnected again, haven't I? My favorite word. You did, you did disconnect. <laughs> so you I was saying, uh, Star Trek, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, no, I was going to say Star Trek is very clean in terms of you know everybody's got a clean uniform, yeah, the ships are very clean, but this is that very dirty, gritty type thing. You know, much more, a little bit more Star Warsy in terms of uh, the thing. When you were building the wall. Um, did you look more at Star Wars or Star Trek? I know the story you said was more Star Trekish, but in terms of the world, was it? It seemed a little bit more Star Warish, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's a fantastic uh, observation. I what I really like about Star Wars is that grittiness because it's so much more real. And I I'm a huge Trekkie, but um, the the grittiness of it uh, usually speaks to a dystopia. So part of our expanded universe is a like corporate conglomerate dystopia where you know everything is owned even more than it is now by you know three or four or five like major conglomerates and stuff like that um so that is i, I am leading more towards that just because we are in a whole solar system of corporate dystopia He's gone again. Okay, cool. Oh. So oh, no, it, it no. sounds a bit cyberpunkish already because you're talking about this. <laughs> oh, you, you're killing us, Stephen. Okay, Seriously, man. Corporations you, you're like really ki killing us. You, you, we're, we're getting about three <laughs> words. <laughs> oh, mate, I feel bad. Oh, I think I'll just be quiet today. I, I'll oh, just be quiet and I'll just, I'll just listen to you guys today. I think so that's better. Astute, though. No, you had such good questions. Yeah, he's the smart one out of the two of us. He just can't get his frigging internet to work. If he could get his internet to work, he's just leaving me with the bag. See, this is what I get, Tom. I was picking on him earlier, and now this is what I get. He's leaving me to all the all, all the work. So well, I think I know what. I'll, I'll speak a little bit, a little bit more towards that. Like, I definitely uh, one of our big morals is definitely about sort of. Um, anti-corporate ultra capitalist society that i definitely don't like and so that is the bad guy in in this series uh cyberpunk mega corporations exactly um and we are gonna we you know we have the little system drones that are flying around that's very cyberpunky um and glurk is from europa the uh juno moon the jupiter moon and so we actually bring in a little bit of colonialism as well where uh europa was sort of discovered and used as a labor force which is really sad but <laughs> that's part of the story and how, how have you guys um gone working with each other um you know i know myself and and steven as well we uh do work with a lot of people um internationally have have you had any like communication uh breakdowns or um understanding or slang or anything like that that is has uh you know had been an issue through through the process or has it been pretty much uh smooth sailing 
<laughs> oh, no one wants to answer. <laughs> no, no, just think about it. I think it's, I think it's been all been pretty smooth. Yeah, and I like that you said that at the same time. Cool. We, <laughs> we, we really enjoyed working with Tom and just kind of like – we we liked his style and then we did the first skype with them and we just kind of like laughed and joked and talked about stuff for like four hours or something so it's been really nice and uh getting to know tom has, has been really good too i think we have well, a everything... good yeah please go tom oh sorry <laughs> uh every um every time i talk to these guys or they tell me the next bit happening I'm always like, I always leave the Skype call like, oh man, I want to draw that right now. I mean, I've got to draw five more dialogue scenes, but goddamn, I would, you know, like, I'm always pumped uh, after they talk, or, you know, like Taylor will just say something to Skype, like, oh, ah, yeah, and next issue, maybe we'll. I'm like, whoa, 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 that was sick. What was that? It's, it's exciting. <laughs> it's, it's fun stuff to draw. And it's, it's, um, yeah, you can tell when people, you know, sometimes you work with people. Then they may be not quite as keen on because they got a lot of stuff on or other things like that. But it seems like everyone who's working, including I want to say um, Jimmy G, the colorist, he's awesome as well. And we're all just so keen on it, and you can just tell everyone's excited about it. So it's easy. It's easy work. Yeah, I think that um, gets shined through um, in the production and the and the quality of the work. I think sometimes you can tell when someone is drawing something for the sake of of drawing something and uh you can then tell when someone is drawing something for the love of of something where they actually are into the story and are, are really enjoying it and everything like that and um you know i've always been a firm believer of and it's great to hear um taylor that you're saying that you you're paying everyone that uh is working on the project but it's also good to say look if this is not what you're you're feeling or not what you want to do that's cool. We can we can go back and we can find someone else or that, but we want someone that's going to be, you know, as enthusiastic as Tom, as enthusiastic as the uh, colorist. You know, you want that. Um, you know, someone that's going to have that same work ethic and excitement around um, your series uh, that you're, you're creating together. So, uh, Stephen, did you have any other questions, mate? There, I'm just. Uh, Oh, look, I'm being very, very quiet because every time I seem, I can hear you guys fine, but when I start sending data out from my computer, I seem to crash it. <laughs> oh, no, so you I'm got through that whole quiet. sentence I'm fine, mate. I'm still here. But thanks for, <laughs> thanks for taking up the show today. I no, know. That's, that's, Maybe that's, the internet that's... Is, isn't so rubbish after all. <laughs> no, but you, you covered the I mega corporation just... part, which is the one I was going to say. It's still very cyber. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like um, uh, taking vibes from uh, uh, Philip K. Dick and like Will and Gibson um, and those guys folding it into, uh, into my story as well. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here in Australia at the moment around the tax of some of those bigger companies that are internationally owned that are all, you know, kind of in those little countries that don't pay any tax and, and everything like that. So I think it's, um, you know, quite an um, important the important story to, to kind of tell and, and that. And I think sometimes... Um, <laughs> what's going on there? Is that you, Stephen? <laughs> oh, this has been an interesting show. Uh, but is there anything you guys no, want I'm to... No, I'm being very quiet. I'm being very, very quiet. <laughs> uh, is there anything that you guys want to wanna um, say or, or finish up on or anything like that? Well, I just want to, again, shout out all those uh, backers who've already backed. That's super cool. I'm going to wake up Ben and... Uh, uh, you know, give him the news and all of these great comments. Mark, thank you for that uh, tip there. Um, yeah, this was super great. Sorry the American was late, but, uh, you know, what can you expect? No, mate, no. When, when it's 5 o'clock in the morning, there's, there's, there's no uh, no need to apologize at all. We we appreciate uh, when when guys come on. We, we you know, unfortunately, with the, some of the time difference, it's hard to kind of do a, a live show like this um, uh, in, internationally without uh, someone getting up um, 
Yeah, super, super early. So we, we really do appreciate uh, appreciate your time. Uh, Tom, was there anything else that uh, you wanted to say, mate? No, nah, just, yeah, thanks again to the backers. Um, yeah. Woo. No problem. Well, we'll share this um, uh, this out on our social media as well, um, and I'll send you the the link uh, to the to the YouTube uh, video. So at any stage, if you're wanting to share that around with your audience, they can come back and and watch this uh, video and and laugh at Stephen dropping uh, in and out uh, the whole the whole time um, as a great uh, co-host uh, that he is. No, nah, not he's not even biting. He's not even going to say anything. Oh, look, but, you uh, covered brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> biting, but you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. We couldn't even hear that, mate. It was like the old. The digital, <laughs> yeah, the compression there. It was great. Oh, geez. See, we're not, like we're not doing anything for our country here, Taylor. We're like we're showing you how backwards where we are. We can't even do video chat. Um, yeah, so I, I, I could, yeah, we can all be there, bud. <laughs> but, uh, oh, he's, he's, he's left. He's left. He's had enough. He's cracked it. I'm in trouble now. I, I better go make up with him soon. So, but no, guys, thank, thank you very much for, for, for coming on. I, re I really do appreciate it. Um, thanks for totally disagreeing with me about uh, about brights that uh, that was fantastic <laughs> uh, no 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 that's that's cool but uh, I hope you guys um, uh, are successful it looks like you're, you're over halfway there now so um, congratulations and Man, uh, so cool, you know guys. Thank you. When, when, when you have uh, when you have uh, other works or whatever um, uh, definitely reach out to us would love to to have you guys uh, back on again and Tom hopefully I'll see you at a, at a convention soon yeah dude totally. Hey right, guys, have a good one. See you, Steven. Yeah. I'm still here. Bye. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks, SK.